it must have been kind of maybe a drastic shift in some ways to suddenly go into Jurassic Park 3 with Joe Johnston at the helm instead, despite you knowing and having worked with him before. Like how, yeah. how different was that experience for you doing Jurassic Park 3? Well, that was a, a number of years later. Um, in my time with Stephen had sort of petered out by then. And um, I forget what, I did a lot of things, a lot of other films. And, but I was on um, <clears throat> Ron Howard's The Grinch. Oh, nice. And, um, and I, I'd met Ron Howard those early, early, early days. The first director, really, I, I worked with um, up at ILM when he was um, doing Willow. That was kind of his storyboard guy up there. And um, that was great. So, you know, so I, I knew him and ran into him. He h had me help on stuff along the way. And then there on Grinch with um, Peter Ramsey and Eric Ramsey. And um, I, think it, I think it was just the three of us. Maybe there was a fourth storyboard guy. I can't remember. Um, that was, that was you know, Grinch was really, really fun. And then I get the call for Jurassic 3 from Kathy, no less, from Kathy Kennedy, which is, made me sit up straight. Yes. <laughs> okay. So I, I signed up for that and went there. And um, Joe and I spent the first several months, right? Just he and I, we were the only ones on it. And, and we would meet in Burbank at, at a coffee shop and, and, and Joe will have would have drawn stuff or he'd draw boards there. And, and Joe is just the greatest artist. He's just so good. And and he had a certain pen that he liked. And I'd run around art stores trying to make sure he had enough of them. And and you know, and 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 he would draw in ink, in pen, just straight ahead, draw it in the shot, frame by frame, by shot by shot. And he wouldn't necessarily not like Stephen, where he would be kind of feeling his way through it, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, sort of steps or poses or steps through the action. You know, Joe would have this shot, bang, and he'd have, you know, arrows that, you know, this comes in and goes out and the camera does this. And it's very, very smart and very precise. And, you know, you look at those art of Star Wars books, those original ones that you could just, the guy is just a, an awesome talent and um and so it was some of that a lot of that you know with joe um roughing out a first pass and then there was a lot a little more elbow room with with his boards where you could you could actually extend the shots in those a b c d ways you know and and get good poses and and that would sometimes cook up other angles and other shot ideas but but joe and i had a great time those 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 first several months and we drew and i know you're going to ask but well, what about the script and i don't remember <laughs> don't ask <laughs> no no I, i'm sure there was a script and being the third one there's a there's a lot at stake and 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 there's a, a lot on the line and studios actually have you know this algorithm of i've heard you know they've had forever that a, a, a part two and then a part three and then a part four will cost this much and you can count on it make making this much in the box office so so it's a balance of how much do you want to spend for how much you're going to get back you know and some directors you know I and mean, that's they won't do sequels because it's you know Favreau has said it's like twice the work just to get the same the same level of attention the same level of enjoyment to the audience that the first one did it's twice the effort and and you're risking you know there's a lot of naysayers and there's a lot again as Favreau said who are just waiting for you to shit the bed you know <laughs> say oh now he's done it you know <laughs> it's like the first one he did this but this one he just had to go and you know whatever you know I remember then I I had a good good buddy there was one of the stalwarts one of the old timers was boarding on it also george jensen who joe knew since the 70s you know who george was a concept artist on close encounters and all those big spielberg movies up at ilm when ilm was was you know 
just really breaking it open and feeling their oats with all these great effects and inventing all of, all of this stuff. You know, George was, so he was there boarding and, and, um, and then another guy, Ricardo Delgado came on, who was, um, had just had huge success with the age of reptiles comic book. It was this brilliant comic that he came up with in that big stretch of time after lost world. And before Jurassic three, there was this, this thirst for dinosaur stories and he came up with this multi-series thing which was hugely successful and just drew beautifully he was doing some boards and then my friend Rodolfo DiMaggio who I discovered years before who was a is probably the best illustrator I've, I've ever worked with just just draws like God I mean he just is so good just a natural and um, and I brought him on and Joe, who is, you know, a tremendous artist and a perfectionist and, and, and a perfectionist in the best way of somebody who's driven to do things great, you know, whatever he does. And, and Rodolfo's that same way. So there are two sort of peas in a pod. And Joe, Joe was funny too, where he, they replaced production designers about halfway through because, because Joe, Joe designed so much of the Star Wars world, you know, it's not like he was a, you know, a neophyte with some, you know, pie in the sky idea of, of design, you know, studied industrial design, could draw anything from any era out of his head, you know, you want a car, you want a jet, you want a building, you want to, you know, cornice work on the building, what era, what, <laughs> just knew it, just drew it and, you know, and had ideas, he would draw it for the production designer and then the, the first one, first production designer, and then the production designer would come back with 15 books of photographs of buildings. And oh, I was thinking some of this and some of that. And then Joe would just draw this thing over again when he was saying, you know, give it to him. And, they, and this went on for months, you know. And so they finally had the, the creative differences and they brought in Ed Vero, who was... Um, the guy from from Stevens guy before I was um, back on on Hook and before then the Jurassic and Empire of the Sun and E. T. All those early Steven movies. Ed Ed was now production is dining. He'd gone from doing the menial storyboard work <laughs> in his youth to production is dining. And and Joe's or, I mean Ed's great. He's a, you know gets it done nuts and bolts the designer elements with the story that that i think because of oh, where i was going with all this blather was that the the sequelitis of by then of the third one you know you're trying not to spend too much but you've got to make it lavish enough that it's new and different and exciting and not you know retread of the first two you you, you, you know what i mean you so you've yeah. got that you've, you're tasked with that with any sequel it's got to be a little bigger and a little trying to be a little better, whether it could be quote better or not in its own way. It's trying. <clears throat> so, so there was that element to it, which, which sifted all the way down into the, the story itself in a sense, like what was going to happen? What, like I, you know, like I quoted before a cool by cool basis, what would be cool here? What would be, what would be new and cool and exciting and 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 so there were there were you know like in any script you've written stuff, you know the hardest part is the ending really making a great ending and then at the opposite and the the, the book end is is what would make a great beginning to the story how do you get into this in a way that's like whoa i'm hooked i'm so yeah. there you know and with the other two, the, you know, there was some some great stuff in there too. You've got that to to, to not overcome, but to sort of go around it. You know, <laughs> sort of like, oh, there's a brachiosaur. Let's go around it and see what we find on the other side. Uh, you know, to try and so so remember those those were challenges um, along the way towards the end of our stint storyboarding. At the ending was a big puzzle. Um, yeah so they and they were were they were open to have us pitch stuff you know what about this what about that 
um, you know, and it became kind of an uh, amalgam of uh, a few different ideas, I think, became the ending. Yeah, and it's interesting how, um, like in your storyboards too, it was originally going to be Baryonyx was the big bad dinosaur, and somehow along the line it changed the Spinosaurus. Do you know why that happened at all? Spinosaurus was a type of Baryonyx or the other way around. And one of them, I think the Spinosaurus was more aqu aquatic than the other. Um, but for the longest time, um, Joe called it the, the just Baryonyx. I mean, that was kind of what we knew it as. And then I don't know where it got this upgrade into something a little more exotic and fancier as a Spinosaurus. Yeah, it's interesting because at one point, I think there was like an early version of the logo that came out and it had a much more baryonyx looking skeleton on the logo compared to it ending up being a Spinosaurus. So I guess they had it in mind to be a baryonyx for quite some time. Yeah. That's beef, <laughs> a beefier head, right? Yeah. More yeah. like a big, big raptor or something, but it had the three claws and the longer arms. Mm -hmm. I think they both did, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. I think they they had it defeat the T Rex, right? Which um, which was really a bummer. I thought. <laughs> yeah, that was for the fans, especially. That was like a big. A lot of people didn't like that. <laughs> I know. Like it. I, it's like I can't. You know, you just can't imagine the apex predator of all time succumbing to anything. You know. Yeah, I still don't think it would have lost. <laughs> i know no we <laughs> had the, a head i mean the other one was so kind of crocodilian and you know and thin but the the t-rex had a head like a freight train you know yeah all that weight and all that that mass imagine the bite on that thing it would just forget it <laughs> yeah <laughs> game <just> over you. <laughs> yeah anywhere it bit would would just be like a landmine going off on your haunches yeah i guess the only thing the spinosaurus had over it was the longer stronger arms like maybe that would give it a run for its money a little bit but otherwise yeah yeah <laughs> and i know like in your storyboards too like there's a lot more of like motorcycle stuff going on which would have been really cool to see all all that motorcycle action although isn't there one where a raptor suddenly gets on the motorcycle or somehow it jumps on it as it's going off a cliff? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, that, that was very complicated. I, I think that eventually got, went the way of the, the Dodo um, <laughs> because it was too much like the, um, the raptors in the tall grass of lost world, you know, you've got mm. similar, similar kind of setup you know uh chase through a field even though they're on motorcycles and you get this way the raptors get to go full full out full speed but um i think the uh <clears throat> the the weird parachute trick at, at the end of that where the 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 gang goes over the cliff on the dirt bikes and then you know, pull their chute cords and they have those parasail chutes, you know, that got transposed or adapted into the um, ter pteranodon, um, uh, you know, uh, parasail parachute scene, yeah. which is a lot cooler too, in a way, yeah. you know, air to air uh, combat with these horrible birds <laughs> and you're flying along with them. It's pretty yeah. epic. That's a fantastic sequence. Probably my favorite from that movie was the whole aviary, all of it. Just so good. So well done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was that was pretty cool. Were you able to go to any of the LA sets? Because I know they did like the big indoor jungle sets um, yeah. for Jurassic Park 3, which looked spectacular. Yeah, that was um that was something else. That that was really beautiful. Um the DP uh Shelly Johnson, I uh, don't know if he helped engineer it. Uh, I know, of course, you know, the lighting would be his his game in there. And they had 
they had some big globe lights. They have like Chinese lantern, sort of those paper circle lanterns, you know, a, a high tech version of that. That's about as big as the 76 ball roll that rolled through the <laughs> gas station. Um, the, you know, they had the, those were, I remember those were up there and they, and what was incredible was they had these um, aerosol misters on set. So they didn't have to smoke it up per se it had actual mist like a rainforest in it which is the first time i'd ever seen something like that it was really really beautiful and that's that's the you know the dp's trick they love that any particles in the air that you can put light through you know really otherwise you don't see the light you know the light lights things up but you don't actually see see the light the shafts the element of it um yeah, that that was a that was a pretty great set. The general vibe of it was um, was pretty great. Uh, like Joe's movies are, you know, is he is um, <clears throat> you know coming from you know where he he came from. Uh, he's very much at home in the art department, you know, more than I think any director. That I know where he just feels at ease among, you know, everybody in their you know, alpha state or whatever in the art department. We're all a little, you know, considered a little spacey or dingy or out there or whatever, you know. And and but Joe's pretty at ease amongst. In fact, I think his office was right there, you know. You you know, right. You just stick your head out the door, and there he was. And 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 so his. Um, participation in in the the group think you know that's that is in the art department including the storyboards is was always really uh really fun and really rewarding you know because he part really partook in it and he really knew how to use storyboards and how to use the art directors in the production side and and you know not necessarily guide them but but partner with 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 them and with us and so you really felt like you know you were you were needed that you were part of the of 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 the process in a big way which is always really rewarding you know yeah, that, yeah your your stuff matters you know yeah uh, and 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 joe is um you know, like Stephen or or like Favreau, you know, or Sam Raimi is works harder than anybody, you know, and so that that buoys you up, you know, to to do your more than you normally would, you know, and do it as best as you can, and because you want to be at that level too, you know, you want to, uh, uh, you know, not just impress, you just you just want to help that much you know in in what you can do mm -hmm.